Hey friend, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use outboard gear in Studio One with Pipeline XT. We're gonna be using some outboard gear in Studio One here. We have a Eureka preamp, so also a Prionis preamp or channel strip that we're gonna be using inside of the DAW today using the Pipeline plugin. But before we dive into the track here today, if you're looking to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process, in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at using some outboard gear. So I'm just about finished tracking this song here. Uh, we don't have uh, the harmony vocals in yet on this song, but everything else is pretty much tracked here. We've got a little bit of EQ and compression going on the drums. If you've seen any of my drum recording videos, you know I like to do a little bit of EQ and compression on the drums on the way in, but I don't do it at the recording stage. I do it inside the DAW so I can have more control and then bounce through it later. We're gonna be looking at the snare drum today and running through, running it through an external channel strip here instead of just using the channel strip inside of Studio One here. So here's our drums. I'll play you a little bit of the track here on this guitar solo and then I'll solo up our snare top mic and you can hear what it sounds like by itself with just the processing uh, we have going on right now. So that's our snare drum in its current state. Let's go to the raw snare drum now. So I'm going to turn off the EQ and compression we have going on because we're gonna replace it with this outboard channel strip here inside of Studio One. So let me hit play here and you can hear the raw snare drum. So it's a great sounding drum to begin with. Uh, we're using an Audix mic on the snare top here. It's a very, very fat sounding mic for snare drum. Uh, something we've started using recently here at the studio. But let's do a little bit of EQ and a little bit of compression on it. That's the nice thing about this channel strip here uh, from PreSonus. It's the old Eureka. It has an EQ and a compressor on it as well as the preamp stage. We're not gonna be using the preamp stage here today because we're sending out through it using it like outboard gear and outboard channel strip here. Here's Pipeline XT. What this lets us do is send out from Studio One to a device, uh, which is gonna be our Eureka here, and then bring the signal from the Eureka back in. So we're using the outboard piece of gear like a plugin inside of Studio One. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna send out to the Eureka. Now I'm sending out channel 27 here on the board. So I'm using one of the mixes here to send out to the Eureka here. And then we're bringing it back in on the vocal channel here. So it's sending out of the board here, channel, where are we at? 28. So if we pull up channel 28 here on the board, I have it set as a USB return. So you have to set the channel as a USB return. So that means your channel, channel 28 here, is gonna be getting signal not from outside here, from a cord in the room, it's gonna be getting signal back from the DAW. So that's the USB return here, the input is set to USB. So we're receiving signal from here. So we're sending out to channel 27, sorry, I keep saying channel 28. Channel 27 here, and channel 27, if I can find it. Channel 30, sorry, it's coming up on channel 30 here. So the Eureka is coming up, channel 30, USB return, and then it's hitting out to our Eureka. So we're sending out from the board here using one of the mixes. So it's gonna change depending on what kind of uh, interface you have. Just send out one of your outs on the back of your interface. That's gonna come out to the Eureka here. 
and then we're gonna send from the output of the Eureka back into Studio One. So the Eureka is plugged into our vocal input, we track vocals through it, but we're setting the Eureka to our line signal here. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit play here and we're gonna make sure our signal is working correctly here inside of the DAW. So let me hit play. So what you can do here is when you hit play, if you hit the auto function, it will auto align your input signal and your output signal. So you don't have any time delay coming back in. So you can see it's offsetting our signal on the way back in here. So we're matching the signal in and out. What we can see though, if I hit play again, is you can see that our signal's out of phase on the return. So what we can do here on the return is flip the phase now. So if we do our auto one more time here. Now our signal is matched here. So we have our signal correctly in phase on the way back in here. So what we can do now is move over to, to our Eureka and we can get our settings correct on the Eureka here. Here we are looking at the Eureka. It's this top channel strip here by PreSonus. So here's our preamp stage. Here's our compressor stage. Here's our meter. And here is our EQ. So one by one here, how we've got it set up is we have the line input selected on our preamp stage. So that means the Eureka is listening to the input coming in the line signal. Since we're sending out of the back of our interface, coming into this, it is a line input signal. It's not a mic signal. So we don't need our phantom power. We don't need to pad it. We don't need a roll off or a phase flip or anything like that. So this, this gain knob, the impedance knob and the saturation knob aren't doing anything because a line signal is skipping the preamp stage here on the way back in. Now, moving over, here's our compressor stage. We'll get to this in a second. The first thing I wanna hit is our EQ stage and I want the EQ to be before the compressor. So we have our little switch here where we can set the EQ to be going into the compressor as I bump the camera on the way back out here. We can also see I have gain reduction set to go to the meter. So that means this meter here in the middle is showing us the gain reduction from the compressor. I'm gonna bypass the compressor for the moment because I don't wanna hear the compressor. I just wanna hear the EQ. So we're gonna go back up oh, to the DAW here. We're gonna hit play on the DAW and we're gonna turn off the auto stage. So again, when we click auto, we can make sure it's aligned. So it's lining them up, okay? Now we have our EQ, just our EQ is in so far. So let's come back over here. Oh, and let's get our EQ set. So what we're gonna do first is let's get some bottom end going. So on the frequency here, Let's go up to 100 hertz and let's do a little boost at 100. I'm also gonna pull the output gain down a little bit because we were looking a little loud on the way back in. Okay, a little more there. All right, so let's add some 100 hertz. That's feeling pretty good. Let's come up to the top end now and do some top end boost here. So we're gonna come to about 5K or so and do the same thing. Let's do a boost at 5K. Pull our output down a little bit. So now we've got our EQ set. Let's move over. And let's get our compressor set here. So I'm gonna go back on the ratio. Let's go down to three to one here on the ratio. All right, we'll pull our threshold back because we don't need that set yet. Fastest attack, fastest release here. Let's unbypass this. 
pull that down a little further. Just kissing it there. All right, now what we want to look at oh, in the DAW is setting our input and output signal to be equal here. So let's take a look. So it looks like we're actually pretty good here. So we're gonna flip back over. That's our processing on the Eureka. Line signal on the way in. Little bump at 100 hertz here. And a little bump at 5K or so here. Then we're pulling our output gain down to make sure we're not killing it on the way in back into the DAW here. Then compression, three to one ratio. Fast attack, fast release. Just kissing it there. We could probably go just a touch further if we wanted to. Cool. That's our processing here on the Eureka. Back inside the DAW here now, what we can do is do one last check. So once we've done our processing, we can hit our auto one more time, make sure our signal's good post EQ, post compression here. Excuse me, drinking too much water here this morning. Uh, so let's take a listen. We'll do our auto check one more time. Cool. The next thing I want to do is check the gain uh, in and out one more time here. So if we bypass it, let's see what our volume sounds like uh, without the Eureka in. That's feeling really, really good to me. So you can, of course, uh, name it as well. So we could name it uh, Eureka if we wanted to here, uh, but I've, I've never really named them because you can name them and, and save them as you go through here and then and then save them as presets. I have a couple ones set up here so you can see I already, I already do have one set for the Eureka. Uh, so we're not gonna name that at the moment. Let's, let's AB this now by itself one more time and then let's put it inside with the rest of our track. It's definitely a ton fatter. It has some nice crack up on the top end. Our compressor's holding it in place here. Let's throw it inside with just our drums here and take a listen. Sounding really good. So if you're starting to try and introduce some outboard gear inside your DAW, definitely check out Pipeline here. So remember, all we're doing is we're sending our signal out, USB return from our interface, using the output there to go into our outboard piece of gear. And then on the output of our outboard piece of gear, we're bringing it back in on a channel on the interface or on a channel on the board here. So here's our output. 
Here's our input, and then we can use the auto function to match them and then do whatever processing we need to on that piece of outboard gear. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the thing for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.